lived in precision, an empowering concept. Hair fashion continues to be told through a visual and wearable stories. Shake up the imagination. Think past happy eras, the roaring 20s, the summer of love in the 60s, and the loved up rave scene of the 80s. Consumers will seek out looks that stimulate and make proactive or confident statements. Rise up and rediscover the joy in design. Embrace the opportunity and most of all, have fun. The 70s Shag Haircut is a haircut that has withstood the test of time. We continue to be inspired by the shape, but reinvent it for today's looks. This is the haircut we will be creating on today's model, Alyssa. To begin this haircut, we'll start in the front. Taking your comb from the outside corner of the eye and rocking it up to the head shape, you'll find the change in direction of where the hair moves forward towards the face. Create your fringe section on either side of the head and isolate it by gently twisting the hair. Next, take a line of sectioning from the front to the apex to the back of the head to separate the right from the left. Using a Sam via tail comb, you will next create a zigzag section in the parietal ridge area. The depth of this zigzag will depend on the client's density. If your client has high density or a lot of hair, the zigzag will be deeper. You can also move the zigzag line lower in the head shape. If your client has low density hair, then you would want the zigzag to be higher with a smaller zigzag pattern to retain more depth and density below this line. Once you've established the sections, clip them off with your Sam via sectioning clips. As you continue the section around to the other side of the head, think about where do the zigzags live in this head shape in relation to the density that's below it. As you come to the front of the ear, there's not much hair below that zigzag. Be thoughtful about where the peaks and valleys live in your zigzag to retain that length. Coming back to the front of your fringe section, take a smaller interior triangle section. Split that in half. On one side, elevate to horizontal 90 degrees and then over direct to the opposite side from where it lives. With your Sam via razor, use small strokes to gently add softness into this cut. Repeat on the other side. Utilizing over direction helps to create soft length as it gains away from the face. This is a simple way to create a curtain fringe with consistency and balance. Once you've completed the interior triangle, you will then continue through the extension of the fringe area. The same principles apply. Elevation at horizontal 90 degrees, over direct to the opposite side. Simply use your guide underneath from your previously cut section. Continue to use small strokes with your razor to create softness in this look. Notice as Ellen uses her razor, she's varying where the razor is working in the hair, slightly shifting it on top and then back to the sides. This adds and increases softness in this section. When the razor's on top, it's cutting out more length. When the razor hits the side, it's creating more texture. Let's move to the sides. From the section from in front of the ear, over direct towards the front of the face, then elevate the hair to about 45 degrees above a horizontal 90 line. Using the guide from your fringe area, 
cut from the top to the bottom of the section, slightly sliding your hand out to retain length in the perimeter. As we work with a razor and through this shape, a lot of these decisions are based on your visual connection with what you want your end result to be. Once you've cut, let it fall back into place and see if this is the length that you and your client have agreed to. If it needs to be adjusted, be sure to go back into the same elevation and over direction that you had previously. Repeat the same steps on the opposite side. Remember, one great way to retain the consistency in your elevation is to turn your client to a profile to the mirror. Use the mirror to ensure that you are repeatedly elevating to the same point with each section. Now we can move to the back. Working in a center back section, elevate the hair to 45 degrees above the horizontal 90. Working with your razor, use long strokes to create a short interior, but let your hand slide through this section to retain length. Notice the blade is connecting with the top of this section and working consistently and smoothly with the movement. Now moving from center back towards the ear, each section will be elevated and now over directed to center back. The same razor stroke and movement will keep consistency in the graduation. When working with the razor, many times we're connecting with visual guides versus physical guides, meaning we keep an eye on where the previous section was visually rather than always connect it to our hands physically. This is how we get perfection with imperfection within our shapes. Now we'll move to the top of the head shape. Starting again in center back, taking a vertical section and elevating straight up. At the top point of that section, we'll establish a guide. Notice how Ellen is softly moving the razor in an upward motion to continue with the feathery feeling of this shape. Now, taking the vertical section, elevating straight up, you have a guide for the short interior. With a razor, we cut from short to long. Using the guide from the high point of the head, the blade of the razor will point up towards the ceiling. Use longer strokes coming from your elbow for consistency in your cut. As you work with this section, keep in mind the top is disconnected from the bottom. To check the balance, let the length fall on top of the underneath section to see if it marries together cohesively with the disconnection. That will help you find the longest length in this section from the high point of the head towards the back of the head. Once you've established the desired length, continue with your razor through that section. To create a seamless blend between the two disconnected sections, drop the base of your last cut section to ensure the length matches consistently. Use your razor for any type of visual connection you need. You'll continue to work through the back of the head in this top section, repeating the steps that you did in the first. Depending on the client's density, 
will determine how thick or how thin of a section you can take. When we combine multiple sections together, we call these compressed. These work perfectly with a tool like a razor. Because we're creating perfect imperfection with this tool, compressed sections make quick work to get to our end result. Notice the long strokes that Ellen is using with her razor. This is the magic of what creates the 70s inspired shag. It will open up and encourage any natural texture in Alyssa's hair. Moving to the front, simply take the section on either side, elevate straight up to vertical 90 degrees and cut the length. This length will go short to long with the length moving towards the front of the head. To encourage texture for this shape, apply Redken's Full Frame 07 Volumizing Mousse. Ensure that the hair is fully saturated. Now, using a bowl diffuser, gently work the hair up and begin to dry. The more you manipulate this shape with your hands as it dries, the fuzzier the hair will be. Stabilize your hand and stabilize the diffuser as you use it to create a consistent, strong curl. And here we have the Alyssa Shag. Look at the movement. This has been created with the razor and disconnection. What a beautiful way to create lived in style that shows off your client's best natural texture. Partnering with the right tools and techniques, this classic shag has been modernized for today's world. <laughs>